Only qualified personnel should service and install HVAC appliances and accessories. See product manual for details. This video will demonstrate how to install, set up, and commission a residential furnace. The following tools are recommended to have on hand when servicing an HVAC appliance. Foil tape, a drill with a step bit, the product manual, a thermometer, a manometer with pitot tubes and gas valve adapter, and all appropriate PPE. When you arrive to the customer's home, locate the existing furnace, its rating plate, and commissioning sheet. Identify the furnace's BTUs, date of installation, and all other commissioning information. Ask the homeowner if there have been any significant renovations, such as an addition or efficiency upgrades, made to the home since the previous furnace was installed. This will help you determine if the replacement furnace has been sized correctly. If working on a new build, determine the best location for the furnace and the configuration needed to suit the installation. Depending on the application and the furnace being installed, the furnace configuration can be either upflow, downflow, or horizontal left or right. When installing any furnace, use the product manual to identify all requirements for venting, supply air, ductwork, service access, clearances to combustibles, and condensate drainage before selecting the final location. Once the final location has been selected, it's recommended that the furnace have a one quarter inch slope from back to front to assist with condensate drainage. In horizontal installations, the furnace must be sloped towards the FMC and the return air end to correctly collect the condensate. When leveling a furnace, utilize the edges next to the service door. Place the level on the front and side of the furnace to ensure it is sloped towards the condensate trap. This location is less susceptible to dents and will provide a more accurate reading of how level the appliance is. Regardless of the orientation, the furnace must always be properly supported and all access doors must be able to be removed for servicing. It's optional to install vibration pads underneath the furnace, as long as it does not interfere with the furnace slope or stability. This will lift the furnace slightly and reduce vibration noise during operation. Additional consideration must be made when installing a one-pipe system to ensure combustion air or chemicals are not being drawn into the furnace. If there is a possibility of chemicals being drawn into the furnace, then a two-pipe system utilizing outside combustion air must be used. Always refer to the product manual for all installation considerations that must be made regarding venting and combustion air requirements. Consider clearances, vent sizing, minimum and maximum distance allowed, and elbows when calculating furnace vent runs. It is recommended that the venting has a minimum of one quarter inch slope per foot towards the furnace to allow for correct condensate drainage. Otherwise, operation issues may occur after installation. Check the product manual and all local codes to identify acceptable venting materials for your jurisdiction. Install and connect the furnace to the supply and return air ductwork, ensuring there is adequate accessibility for filter removal, according to the product manual. Use foil tape along the ductwork seams to ensure the system is as airtight as possible. Next, wire the furnace according to the product manual and all local codes, ensuring to include a shutoff switch between the panel and the furnace. Once completed, run a low voltage wire for the thermostat, referencing the wiring diagrams in both the thermostat and furnace manuals. If wiring a single stage thermostat, select either a five or 10 minute delay for the auto staging by adjusting the location of the P5 jumper on the furnace control board. If wiring a two-stage thermostat, the P5 jumper must be moved to the none position. Next, install the condensate trap. When planning for the condensate trap, ensure it is located so that drain piping can be connected on the unobstructed side of the furnace. Connect the drain hose between the front manifold cover and the condensate trap, ensuring there are no harsh bends or kinks. This is accomplished by routing the drain hose across the front of the FMC to the opposite side, where the condensate trap is located, as per the diagrams within the product manual. The drain collar connected to the venter motor must also be connected to the trap in conjunction with the FMC drain hose. This drain collar can be rotated slightly to reduce the chances of any kinks against the service door or other internal components. Ensure all drain hoses are oriented so they are consistently running in a downward slope to promote correct condensate drainage. After the condensate trap, the condensate drain piping must have an atmospheric vent 
This ensures that a vacuum lock does not occur, allowing condensate to drain freely out of the furnace. Once installed, ensure the condensate trap is primed by filling it with water. The end of the hose must not be submerged in water and should allow the condensate to flow freely, known as an atmospheric break. Next, refer to the product manual and local codes to connect the gas supply to the furnace. Once connected, check the gas pressures. To do this, locate and reset your manometer to read zero inches water column and turn off the gas supply. Then locate the gas valve and identify the inlet. When checking gas pressures, ensure that all gas appliances on the same line are turned on and set to high fire. This ensures the furnace will receive the correct gas pressure, regardless of the other appliances in the home. Check the inlet pressure, ensuring it doesn't fall below 5 inches water column for natural gas or 11 inches water column for propane. For maximums, natural gas must not exceed an inlet pressure of 10.5 inches water column and propane must not exceed 13 inches water column. If a two-stage furnace is being installed, verify that the pressures for both the low and high fire are correct. These values can be found on the product's rating plate and manual. Once correct pressures are confirmed, measure the static pressure and delta T for the system to ensure it is operating correctly. Videos outlining these tests are linked in the video description. Once installation is complete, fill out the commissioning sheet in the product manual. This will ensure the last known operating parameters of the furnace can be used during any future service calls. Click here to view the Wolf Steel Technical YouTube page. Like and subscribe to our channel to get notifications for new product and troubleshooting videos.